Okay, so um, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, another seminar of the Plant Phenome Journal, Journal webinar series. Uh, today, the TPPJ webinar is going to be Dr. Felipe Matias. He's a postdoctoral scholar with uh, Dr. Jeff Endelman at University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's going to be speaking on a software package he developed, and it's also a recently published paper in the Plant Phenome Journal. Uh, so if you go to the website, you can access the paper. And I think he's planning on doing a little demo today. Just as a reminder, because of the Zoom bombing, uh, I've made it a, a little diff more difficult to connect. Uh, you do need to use a registered account if any of your friends are having trouble uh, connecting. Uh, they just have to have a registered, registered Zoom account, whether it's with a university or whatever. Um, I've also will probably disable the, the chat feature. Um, and I would just encourage everybody just to make sure if you don't want to see anything inappropriate, I can't stop people from sharing video. Um, so just don't watch the, uh, the people's video, just watch uh, Felipe's screen share. So those are my suggestions. Hopefully any Zoom bombing I can shut down fairly quickly and um, we'll have a great webinar. So Felipe, uh, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, hi everyone. As, as Dr. Set said, this is a live, so we are, everything can happen. We are trying to give our best in this webinar today to share what we are doing. So first of all, Thank you, Dr. Sad Murray, to invite me for this webinar. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's a really, during this time that we are going through this pandemic time, I guess, have this opportunity to talk in a webinar. Uh, it's important to keep studying, to keep learning. So thank you, the Plant Phenomenal Journal, to open this, to open this uh, space in our community. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about field imagery, which is the work that I've been uh, doing since last year. And I work here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison with Dr. Jeffrey Endelman in potato breeding, right? The idea is try to make a theoretical part first and then a practical part. Uh, so if you want to open, I don't have a lot of time, but if you want to open your R Studio, the software R, we can try to make something. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the steps and then just to give an idea how this uh, pip, pep, uh, pipeline works, okay? So let's start. Me, not sure. Okay, hopefully you're guys seeing well my, my screen. I wanna try to talk a little bit about all these points and, but mainly about application, which is the most important and trying to correlate with what the people are doing, what the people are sending the feedback to me and for our group uh, and give more ideas. The man, the man, the man actually idea here is try to um, give you some uh, applications that you can do in the lab work and the field work and we are going through many examples. As Dr. Murray said, uh, we are presenting here the paper that we published at the Plant Phenomenal Journal, which was a great experience to me. I, now I would like to say thank you to Dr. Caraza Harter and Dr. Endelman for all support and to stay with me in this, in this de developing this tool. And we have this GitHub page here on the bottom part. So you can go there and see that we have a really detailed uh, steps that you can go through. So let's start. Back here in Madison, my project basically is try to use remote sense information in plant breeding. And in our case, potatoes, they grow under the ground, right? And we are collecting images above the ground. And then we can make some questions. For example, can I observe some difference using the leaves that we use in the plants that I can correlate with going on under the ground in the potatoes. If you see here, uh, we are going in the field collecting pictures during the entire crop growth cycle from uh, before it starts sprouting to maturity. And one possible question is, can I uh, identify some signature during the flowering time that is related with the tuber initiation? Or can I predict maturity? Or can I predict yield, which is the most important? So this kind of questions is what we are trying to answer in my project and also use all these possibilities and all this amount of information to improve 
our prediction and our selections. You can use these uh, to build vegetation indices and then apply directly selection, or you can use this information as a cofactor in models and try to improve our predictions and reduce, reduce our error. So there are many, many possibilities, okay? I'm gonna show, uh, in general, potato examples, but everything that we are gonna see here can be applied for any other crop. That's important because some people think that, oh, it works only for potatoes. And no, no, it's work with any kind of image, actually. Okay. So here is one image that I took last year during the flooring time at Hancock Agriculture Research Station, where we have our fields. And as you can see, we have four different trials in one picture, so four different populations. And then when I first start work with remote sensing, uh, I really thought that it was hard to, to get information for each plot. And then I start searching how normally the breeders or the people that I work with that are doing this. And then I figure out that normally they use Python or GIS pep lines, which is amazing by the way. But as my background is breeder, uh, breeding, genetic and plant breeding, and we use lots R, and I know, I feel comfortable working with R, I thought perhaps I can uh, try to develop some functions or scripts that I can, I can use during my research, right? And then works. <laughs> and then I'm here today talking about that with you, sharing what we are doing. And yeah, so we are going through the pipeline and hopefully, uh, it's clear enough, so feel free to make questions and send your questions, I guess, in the chat, the chat here, and then uh, Dr. Moru are gonna answer. We have it, right? The questions and answers later. So the first function is uh, crop the image, right? Field crop, the name. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I wanna work in this example only with this trial, the purple trial, and this function allow the user select four points around the field the trial boundaries and crop the other side, the, this part that we are not using here. It's important because R uh, don't don't R is more statistical software than image software, and doing this we are reducing the size of the object that we are working with. So uh, this is a really important strategy too. Okay, so this is the first function. Then we need to prepare this image for do uh, extraction, to do for do our extraction. How we do that? Uh, there is a pipeline that we are going through. The first one we should rotate the image to be straight, and then being straight is easier to draw the grid or the shape file. Okay, and here uh, we are removing the soil effect and keeping only the vegetative part, which is important for us. Uh, I guess remove the soil is really important uh, the kind of where you're doing because uh, the index, for example, I'm extracting vegetation index and it's related to greenness. If you have a soil br or brown part there, it's pushing down your values and kind of make some, uh, introducing some bias in, our, in your data. And I did some, uh, tests and really change, change a lot uh, the results. So uh, I guess for this case, when you extract information per plot and you, wanna, and you only want, uh, you know, the reflectance information is important, remove the soil, okay? And then after you do that, you can draw the field shape file. And then we have uh, this function called uh, field shape, where the user select four points here around the boundaries and draw the field shape file. For these, the user should say the number of columns, which is this here, and the number of rows, okay? And as you can see in this point, is in, uh, we can la leave the borders out, which is important too, right? So after we draw the shape file, as you can see here, you can uh, use for different things. One of one of the possibilities is uh, use the same shape file that you draw that you uh, that you draw before here during the vegetative growth, for example, during the flowering and senescence time. But it is important to remember uh, that it, to use ground controls 
or to use some strategy to keep the same uh, geographic reference between uh, the pictures in the time, in the series pictures, right? Uh, to keep sure that this field shape file will work for all pictures that you're gonna take. So if you're flying or keeping the same strategy to do the auto mosaic and using ground control point, it's a really great strategy, right? So what else you can do? We can, for example, uh, calculate vegetation indices. In the phone, in the package, we have many, many, many different uh, index available there, but the user can introduce their own equation. For example, writing the equation in the software, we're gonna show some of uh, these later. Here I'm highlighting two main index, the NEDVI and NEDRE, which is maybe the most used index in agriculture. They are both related with greenness and we are gonna talk about that later and how we are applying that in potato breeding here, okay? Here are just some examples. And the, fu uh, the function that is calculated is, is field index. Another possibility, if you have one output from the ortho mosaic is this digital surface model for the people that are watching that don't know exactly what this. Basically, uh, for each pixel, we have latitude, longitude, and altitude. If you combine the altitude together, you have an idea about the profile, the, the you know, elevation profile in this picture, basically that. To calculate plant height, we first need to take a picture from the base, as you can see here. We don't have uh, potatoes coming out, right? So, and also in our case, we took this picture after the healing because we need to see uh, we, this healing can introduce some bias. So after the healing, we took the, pic uh, took the picture, which is the base, and then we took another picture here and calculate, and, and then we have this digital surface model with plants, right? When we remove the base from this picture here, we have the canopy height model, which is this central figure here. You can see that uh, we could remove uh, this elevation part here, which is introducing a bias when you extract directly. I have some examples doing this in the tutorial, I can show you guys later. Actually, I don't have time, but you can go there and check later. I'm gonna show where, where I put this information there. After this, we remove the soil using a mask, right? And then we use the field shape, uh, the field shape to extract information. It's, it's super, super uh, easy to do actually. Another possibility is a uh, stunt count, which is count the number of plants. Here we have one image. Uh, the first step, if you remember that we are talking about the pipeline and the steps. One example here is uh, we struck the soil and one output from that function is the mask. And after we have the mask, we use this function called field count, which is which use one algorithm called water shell to identify the shells or the surface and count them, okay? They identify the surface and we, uh, we our function count how many uh, individual shapes there is inside each plot. If you see here, also we have these blue arrows showing some artifacts in the image. These artifacts can be farther leaves, can be weeds. So the user can change the one uh, parameter called uh, mean size and say, oh, I don't want to, that you count anything lower or smaller than this. Basically, this part, the function talk about that. And you can correct some uh, errors during your counting. This is one other possibility. How we are applying this here, uh, for us, uh, vine maturity is a really important trait in potato breeding. And we go in the field and we classify our plants from one to early maturity when the genotypes are already uh, dead in the field, to nine when they're still green and flowering. Uh, so we go in the field and we give a note. So we look the plot and we give a, 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 no, a, a score from one to nine. 
This image here uh, we plot using this function field plot just to show uh, coloring. Basically, what are we doing? We are coloring uh, the field uh, the field shape or the grid by the value that we are that we are the value in that for that specific point. Okay, it's just something nice to show in your seminars and for your uh, advisor. We're not gonna talk with him. <laughs> Talk about our results. So what we did here, we went to this field and we give a visual score. And also at the same day, we went there and we did a fly and a flight, and then we extract the information from that. We calculate any DRE. Do you remember that we talk about the two main index that we are going to talk? Any DRE and any DVI. And in our X axis here we have our visual rating so i and my uh, a colleague of mine we went there and we give the scores and here we have the index value okay if you see i uh, have a really great correlation around 65 for any dre and 71 to any dvi but the most interesting thing is uh when we evaluate the heritability uh, the index, they had better values than our visual score, which kind of was expected. If you see what's green to me, maybe it's not green to you. My sensors, they are not maybe the same sensors. Actually, probably they are not the same. <laughs> I'm sure they are not the same sensor for my friend. And uh, we can introduce bias in our data, right? And when we saw these uh, doing a flight for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and we had a really better uh, values because uh, the, basically the, uh, this, this strategy, this tool is collecting the average per pixel and signed a plot, which is amazing. Yeah, it's much more precisely. And then we can see here uh, 84, for example, 84, uh, heritability of 84 which is great okay well let's continue here that's uh, a really great example uh back here for the ones that had the opportunity to come up north in wisconsin to the north woods know how the wildlife is and how amazing is their wild wildlife there and then it's happened last year and now it's a great thing to talk because it's a good example to how we use the software and how to use remote sensing images. But at the, at the time it was terrifying. If you see here, we travel to there, we collect pictures during the soil beans. Then we collect during the vegetative growth, the flowering time, you can see many flowers, plants flowering here. And then we, for the, uh, for the vine maturity, you see this, some material just disappear just disappear and uh the first question is just just remember the what i said before what's it started to happen here during the flowering time it started also the tuberization in potatoes so in this point here we don't have potatoes but here we already have potatoes in the field right so uh i'm gonna help you to see this better here uh, with the grid and you see that some genotypes just completely disappear right and this is a great example of how evaluate damage or I wanna, I wish to talk about a bug example, but our bug is a little bit bigger than, <laughs> our problem is a little bit bigger than a bug. Uh, it's a deer size. So we, last year we had this problem with deers. The deers went there and they really love the reds, the red potatoes. And then when they like, they try. And then when they like, they eat everything. So that's why here we can see some genotypes just <laughs> disappear. We lost this material here. I'm still trying to convince Jeffrey Endelman to, uh, to start doing selection for deer resistance, and then we'll be the first potato breeding program releasing one cultivar with deer resistance. But yeah, it's been hard. He's not in agree with this, this idea, but it's one good uh, application now, evaluate damage, okay? It's another uh, idea to talk. So after the Phenom 2020, which was the conference uh, in Tucson, where I, we officially released the software, uh, 
some people are starting to uh, contact us and applying the functions for a different thing uh, that we first didn't uh, thought about that. So the, for example, here, they adapt the function field count, which originally we did for count plants in the field to count, for example, pollen, which was a great, great uh, application. The same uh, here, this, uh, these colleagues, they're counting seeds and a year, in a year, see? These other, these other colleagues, she was evaluating the, the percentage of uh, disease damage in soybean. And then uh, she was using one other function called field area, which select regions, right? And see, actually field area originally was uh, made for canopy area. So uh, we use that function, you, we, we use the mask to calculate the area. And it's another nice application to do. This other uh, colleague, Jessica, she was evaluating the disease damage or disease area person, area damage in tomatoes. As you can see here, uh, you can evaluate using colors uh, where the area affected. And also you can extract indexes from that. For example, here the blue green index and try to evaluate these in our breeding program to do selection or try to figure out uh, some issue or challenge in your breeding program, which was a, another great strategy too. This other example, uh, the, uh, Diane and Lucas here from Wisconsin as well, they were evaluating uh, the color of seeds in this glass gem corn, which is a really wonderful example uh, using image segmentation, what we are gonna uh, try to talk a little bit the next slide, you can make a mask and then uh, using indices or you know any thresholding uh, approach and see the percentage of that using the field area, the same function that we use to evaluate disease and soybean like two slides ago. Which is a really great uh, example. In this example here, uh, for the entire area is 38 percent with image, right? Applying another index, yeah, they can figure out the green, yellow seeds, another index, gray and blue, and using difference here, they figured out 7% of violet and pink, which was a great, uh, it's a great possibility for many people that work with colors. For example, in our reading program, we have evaluation for reds, different, different traits in red potatoes. So how it works, I'm gonna use this really simple example. Uh, the same strategy that we are using here, it's used for all the work that we are talked before. We have the original image and then we calculate the mask. And then using the mask, we crop the region that we wanna select with. For example, here we are using the index vary to identify, try to identify soil, uh, sorry, no, the background and the plant. But the same strategy was the one that we used to identify plants and do the stand count. So we are removing the soil. In this case, we are removing the background. Basically, we use this strategy called thresholding, which, is, which means we select a point. And from this point, we say, above this value is false because it's related to the background. And below this value is true, which is this related to the seeds. To be easier uh, to identify where is this threshold, the one strategy is make the, hist the histogram with these values here. So here is many pixels and each pixel has a value. And then when we do the histogram, we can see these two peaks here, right? And then the middle of these two peaks, it's a really good point for you choose to choose uh, a value to crop. Basically that. It's the same thing that we did to remove the soil as well. We, uh, this method is image segmentation and the most, uh, then inside the image segmentation, we are using thresholding, okay? I guess, if that makes sense, right? It's super easy. And then you can use what? The field count, the same function that we used before to count plants in the field, here counting seeds and also counting pollen. So basically, basically we are adapting the same pipeline for another, use like for another phenotype he uses in the, in the laboratory, in laboratory and also in the field, right? So uh, these 
it's what I prepare for the theoretical part, right? So uh, this software is completely valuable, it's totally free. Uh, we did this uh, to help. And so please use, give us your feedback, give your uh, suggestions to improve the software. If you, this is the link for our GitHub where we have uh, more examples, many other examples. And if you put your cell phone here in this barcode, it will bring you directly to there, right? Uh, if you are a professor and, or if you are, wanna teach how to use this software, uh, the, not only the software, but you wanna teach about remote, applying remote, remote sensing plant breeding or in agriculture, you, th this pipeline is totally free and we put many examples and then you can download and going through that and teaching or uh, understand the concepts. Right. So with these, I want to say thank you. Actually, we have the proxy part now, but I want to say thank you to University of Wisconsin Madison to give me the opportunity to be here. Also, Dr. Endemann to have me as a, his postdoc, and I really, I really enjoy stay here and I learn every day, which is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna share uh, my my screen here, and we can start our Prati part. Are you, Dr. Seth, could you, are you seeing my, my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, awesome. So let's nice here. So here we go. Uh, this is uh, the tutorial online, if you the imager, our tutorial. Okay. So you can come here and then uh, we have a, a, small, a little introduction and we have all these possibilities here. Today I wanna go uh, to the basic steps, basically uh, preparing the image and extract information. As you can see here, it's just a copy and paste. I just copy and paste here. Here's the example that you can download. So uh, this example here is exactly what we are seeing here. I already downloaded this, so I'm not download again. And what I say, say is, go here, copy and paste. So let's call the softwares and then let's call the image and then let's plot. See here? It's the same image that is here, okay? So, and then you can come and start copying and paste to understand what we are doing. This function is that function that I called field crop and uh, this function allow you to select four points or maybe more points around the field boundaries. If you see you are in interacting all the time with this plot area, right? So here we crop the image, we reduce the size. The next one is rotate the image to be straight. If you don't, if you don't know the theta or and the angle to rotation, you can use this, try to figure out the angle using this, uh, this command here. But in this case, I already know which is the angle. So let's just copy and paste and see how rotate the image. And then the, the output come here. Let's reduce the size here. Okay, the next step is field mask. In this case here, we are removing the soil, but trying to correlate what we just saw there, what we are doing is the image segmentation using threshold, right? The default is this index, fully, but uh, we have here in the pipeline showing how you should, uh, how, how you select the background or select another index to remove the background. And then when you, you run these, uh, we have this mask saying where is true and where is false, and we select where we have plants, right? Then the next step is building the plot shape file. Uh, I, I give here some explanation how the process goes. Uh, when you don't have uh, Excel or CS, CSV data set to identify each plot, but let's do the identification here. We have example of data, uh, data table to download, and we wanna combine the information that we have in the field with the information that we, that we 
with our picture actually. So I want to combine my table that I collect data in field in the field with each plot in my data set. So when we run this, we have our data table here. If you see, we have the plots, the block, the range, and some traits, right? Height, maturity, and yield, for example. And uh, the most important part here is make the make the field map. The field map, if you see here, uh, I don't have space enough, but as you can see here, uh, the first column, this first one here, is one, two, three, go into 14. And then here starts being 15 and go into 28, right? So we are identifying our plots, uh, we, we are identifying each plot using the plot information, okay? And here it's the function how we make this. So what we are saying here, uh, we are giving the number of columns, the number of rows, the field map is this saying, oh, this position is 14, this position is 13, is our field map that we just draw, uh, just made, right? We have here our data table, which is the table that we bring from the field. And then uh, from this data table, I'm identifying my plot using the plot column, right? The plot column, the same information that I used to draw the map. So when we run this function, uh, they allow you to select four points on the boundaries in your field. Remember here, we are leaving the border out. So we are not, we don't want the border. And automatic, automatic, they uh, combine, the, they draw the, the, you know, the, the field shape file and combine the information that we have from our field. And then when we run these and see the information in our plot shape file, what we saw is our field table, right? If you remember, do you remember uh, the first column here is plot 14. So the first, uh, the, the, ha the maturity is like three and yield is 4.9. So we make this, you know, we join the information, join the information, okay? So the next step now we can, for example, calculate the vegetation indices. Here's the table with all indices that we have, but the user also can introduce their own index using this parameter called my index. Let's see how uh, it looks like. We have here, uh, we identify where is our red band, green band, and, tree, uh, and blue band. Here we select which index that we wanna look. For example, uh, if we wanna look also here, the uh, SI, for example, right? And here, my index is where the user can introduce any other index that is not really, uh, like it's not in this table right here. And you can put anything here, uh, A times, A times red, blue divided by, I don't know, nine and green, right? So when you run this function here, the automatic plot uh, the results. Remember, we are using here uh, a mosaic after you already remove the soil, so uh, which is great. Just showing some example. And then after these, uh, there are, uh, I'm talking about uh, field counting here, but we're gonna, we are not gonna, we don't have time to run these examples. But we wanna extract information. So we come here, select this part. And for instance, I wanna only, I, I only wanna uh, evaluate here. Let's evaluate everything, so run here. And then what this function is doing is you extracting the information per each plot that we have. Uh, there is this possibility to do the parallelization. And then in this case, I'm using three, three cores. And it's basically what we are doing. We are sending uh, each plot for one core per time. And then it gives us back, uh, it's already run here, give us back the information per plot. So if you see here, we have 
do you remember our you remember our data from the the, the field right weight maturity yield tuber set and now we have red green blue the average information per plot any grde i and my index and with this you can uh, just continue going and with this value here, you are already in the R, you already can start doing your models or your selection and your graphics. Just to finish, I wanna show uh, the tutorial. So here's the code to, according to the code for evaluate plant height. Here another possibility when you run a remove some problem in your picture, uh, here, calculating the distance between plants, we have this function called field draw that allows you to calculate distances. And here, uh, basically, we are plotting, uh, you know, the reflectance information for this index. And here, where we crop, like, do you remember we talk about the thresholding, right? Uh, where we crop the image. Uh, we did some analysis uh, evaluating resolution, and if you see here. Uh, when you are only struck the average per plot, the resolution actually don't ma don't, doesn't matter a lot. Uh, if you see, we have different resolutions here and we have a really almost the same result. Basically, it's because we are averaging the pixels. So if you don't need high precisely uh, identif identif to identify small objects, you do not need to high resolution. Uh, and we discuss a little bit better about that. Okay. And then we talk about this uh, using during the entire food crop cycle. Crop cycle. Uh, the software works well with multispectral. Uh, I never try high uh, hyperspectral here. I guess it's, the image is too big for R, but okay, uh, um, multispectral works pretty well actually. If you don't have a grid file specific like like we draw in our practice today with a small or perfect grid, you can use this function field polygon to draw any kind of polygons that you, that you want to extract information from. Normally people from forest use this function here. Here's that uh, function to plot information. We can plot this my index using this equation here. Oops. Okay, so let's, let's copy this. Let's see, and then when we plot here, so we are plotting my index, right? Using that field, so just showing the extraction value that we did for each field. Here's how save. Uh, here, another example if you want to do a complete open source pipeline from Orto Mosaic to data extraction, you can go through this pipeline. We are uh, talking. We are partners with Open Drone Map, which is an open source pipeline to do auto mosaicing. Here, I'm showing how you do that. You can download examples. You can download example here and here, and follow their pipeline to do the auto mosaic, and follow our pipeline to do the extraction, as you can see. Another code for, to do parallelization, mainly when you have many pictures in a folder and you want to make this faster to analyze, you can follow this. And also quick tips about uh, how change the memory in R, how reduce the resolution, and how you bring or import uh, your QGIS uh, shapefile to the R. You can draw the shapefile there and it brings the shapefile to R. Right? Uh, we have, I did some video, YouTube videos that is available here and can go, basically is exactly what I'm doing here in this Pratsy today. Just go there and follow. We have these two courses, actually the video are in Portuguese, but uh, if you click here, you have these courses here. You can go, you can use to, to teach or you can use to learn how we are doing re applying remote sensing or image analysis in potatoes, not only in potato, but in other examples. I wanna say thank you to Embrapa, uh, Mizen Servo, and also Embrapa Beef Cattle to invite me for this workshop. As you can see, 
as we did here, they have the down, you can download and follow the pipeline. In this example, we were counting the number of green seeds in soybean, and then we are evaluating this process, counting the green seeds using image segmentation and thresholding. And also we evaluate uh, sorghum height, uh, this example here provided by Indrapa. And so the user can just go in to remember what I told about histogram to select the point to crop and do the mask. Here showing another example of that. And then at the end, some coding to do some graphs and cor uh, find some correlations, that correlations values here. Yes, uh, yeah, do we, ha we have this forum for questions. Please come here and with any questions you can send there. I will try address them as soon as I have time. And also for the people that already are using the software, please help me to answer questions there. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Uh, if you are a developer and if you have ideas, come talk to me. It's, a, as you can see, it's completely open, it's completely free. You can just go there and assess and uh, give suggestions. I really appreciate this too. This software is free and for, for our community, uh, I'm here to help. This is the paper that we just published in the Plant Phenom Journal. So thank you again, Plant Phenom Journal and Dr. Seth Murray. And so I wanna say thank you to University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thank you to the Department of Horticulture Thank you to Dr. Endelman, Maria Caraza, and Ling Song, my friends that work with me on that. Also, I wanna say thank you for the staffs in the farm, Hancock and Rylande, which do an amazing job and really help me with this adventure in remote sensing plant breeding. Yeah, it's, thank you. I don't know if I have time or... Yeah, I think you've got lots of time. Um, we're, uh, we're at 11.42 right now. So uh, okay. thanks for your great presentation. Uh, uh, you, had, uh, you had people joining and leaving the whole time, so I didn't really get an accurate count. But also uniquely to your uh, presentation is you have a lot of questions already in the group chat. Awesome. Um, some of which people have already answered, but I think it might still be worth going through them. Um, so I'll, I'll read a few of them. And uh, if you want to respond, uh, that'd be great. So from uh, Juliana, uh, they struggled to understand how you got the height of the plants. Do you collect altitude data before and after the plants grow? Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, I'm still sharing my, my screen or not? No, you're not. You're, uh, we only see your video at the moment. Okay, I'm going. Uh, I'm sharing now? Yep. Okay, yes. So as if you can, where is this? Here. If you, if you come here, in this example, we are doing exactly that. Uh, we have the DSM file, which is this digital surface model. Before the plant starts sprouting, or we have plants in the field, which is the base, right? The base. And here, we have uh, information with the plants already. So. As you can see here, we have the altitude elevation here. We have the elevation from that field, right? So when we remove this base from these plants, we have what we call by cannot height model. Why this is important? If you see all this region here, it's higher than this part. If you do the direct, direct, direct extraction without remove the soil base here, these plants probably will look like higher, looks, looks higher, but actually they are not. And this can introduce some bias. If you come here in these results, uh, this value right here is when we extract the plant height using the directly DSM file without remove the soil, okay? We had the correlation of 40%. But when we extract the soil base, the soil base and only have the canop height model, which is the elevation corrected by the base. We had a much better uh, correlation around 82. That's a great example. And uh, here we are taking the average, right? Here's the mean size in the plot. Here's the maximum size in the plot, 100%. If you see, if you use around 75% or 90%, you really have 
much better correlation with the real plant height. So this is one good strategy to do. If you start flying after you, for example, in potatoes is a problem because we do the healing and this healing can make a difference in your uh, estimations. But if you are in a flat or uh, yes, in a flat field, after you harvest, if you don't have the soil base, after you harvest, you can take the picture and do the elevation model there. It will be much better than use directly the, the value from uh, only one uh, DSM file like we are seeing here. I guess, I don't know if I address, if I answer your question, but uh, is this. Yep, I, 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 think, I think that plus the discussion, they can, they, I think that was very helpful. Okay. Um, next question also from Juliana. Uh, is it possible to measure seedlings using field image R? Seedlings. Seedling. Uh, but from the field or from images like this? Well, they don't, they don't specify, so. I guess yes. <laughs> Uh, the most important process here is exactly what we are seeing here. Uh, is the process to do the image segmentation. It's really important we, it's really important we select the right index. Actually, what we are doing here is adaptation, right? But uh, it's important you select the right index using this, pro this pro protocol here, this process here, to crop your field in whatever is background and whatever you want to count, right? Uh, so if you do this, you can count anything, but just remember it's important select the good index or try to develop your own equation that is specific to identify that region that you want to look, that you are looking for. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Shay Simpson asks, is this presentation recording available at the TPPJ site or for subsequent viewing? Uh, I usually put most of the, the videos as long as they turn out okay on YouTube so that um, I think there was a lot of interest in, in probably some of what you said, uh, Felipe. Yes. Um, so uh, Anna Rita asks, um, uh, you show results for other researchers, panicles or seeds. Did they apply your package to these images? If yes, can field image also measure seed or panicle length, width, et cetera? I believe yes. Yeah, I guess it's possible. As I told here, uh, as we have this example to uh, calculate, uh, to evaluate distance between plants, you can use, uh, a, uh, you can do some coding to apply this function uh, to evaluate, uh, you know, Inflorescence, or yeah, to evaluate inflorescence or any kind of distance there. But actually, just remember, at the first, this picture was made to evaluate image from drones or remote sense images. It's basically uh, it's a good surprise that start to happen after we release the software in, at Phenom 2020 in February. So, but people, yes, the people, yes, already already counting and identifying features and, and seeds. Yes. Nice. Uh, Mung asked, oh, it just disappeared. Uh, can the package be used for uh, tracking flowering time, like detecting flowers from the image? Yes, that is possible. Again, finding the right, finding, finding the right, uh, index or equation that allows you to identify flowers. As you, as you can see here, uh, in this image, all these white points here, it's flowers, right? So I can apply first one thresholding to remove the soil, and I can apply then one thresholding to remove the green part and have only the white ones. Or may, or for example, I develop one equation which I will put here, right? During, sorry, field, um, field mask, where, where, where I will put here in field mask to identify only the flowers. And then if I have this sh shape file, 
I can count or I can see the percentage or area of flowering per shape file that I have here. But again, the most important thing is find the equation that identify your plot, uh, whatever you are looking for. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, lots of comments about how uh, this is great. This is so cool. Uh, your YouTube videos is a great idea. Um, thank you, etc. cetera. Uh, so I have a couple, a couple questions and a couple comments um, while we're waiting for more. Uh, go ahead, if anybody else has any questions, please type them into the group chat. Um, so one, I think some of the questions related to uh, imaging seeds or, or germination, I know that there's been a substantial investment in like plant CV, which is another open source R package. Um, I, I wonder if some of your, uh, some of the functionality that may not exist in field image R and plant CV would be complementary, where you can move things back and forth. Have you or anybody else done that so far? I guess, uh, I guess actually it's a complementary tool. Uh, we are talking up here uh, in using our software to do the analysis. Plant CV, I guess, is Python. So some people feel more comfortable using uh, Python, some people comfortable using R. So it's kind of complementary. But uh, Plant CV was, uh, there are many amazing research there developing uh, a software specific for seeds, specific to get me measurements in plants, right? So I guess it's a complementary technology, yeah. It would be interesting to compare, actually. But uh, it actually is not what I'm doing now. I'm, my focus is on right drone images and reading, I guess, probably is like yours. Uh, I, I, I enjoy this opportunity today to show what the people are doing over there, mm -hmm. right? Then I start talking about the seeds and all that process. Um, so I don't think you, you talked uh, much about what the long-term uh, maintenance plans for this package are and what uh, potential functionality you might plan to introduce in the future, if any. Uh, actually, the functions coming according to what the feedback that I receive, right? So some people ask, could you try it is possible to evaluate distance between plants. Uh, at the first, we didn't thought about that, but then if there is someone over there and it help, and then we try to do some, you know, uh, coding that can help because the person feel better using R, and then we do some adaptation coding. Then, for example, this function here, uh, then we get this function, you know, to calculate uh, distance. Basically, it's feedback. Yeah, right now I'm not planning, I guess our lab also not planning to do any other, uh, you know, new function, only if it's necessary for the community or if someone, someone asks. But in general, it's always the same pipeline, the same protocol, you go just adapting that for your reality. Okay. Uh David LeBauer asks, how difficult is it to geo-reference the images so that shapefiles can be reused throughout a season? That's interesting. So uh, the most important part here, uh, let me go there. The most important part here during the rotation is to keep this angle here. So if you are using the same rotation in your all images from, you know, from beginning to the end, you're gonna have this, uh, the ship fire is gonna fit well. So pay attention here, we are, we are setting the theta 2.3, right? So when we come here, a uh, crop growth cycle, which is pictures during the entire cycle, you can see that we are doing this, using the same theta during the flowering time and during the senescence time. During this time here, flowering time and senescence time. And when we apply the same theta, we can use the same uh, shape file that we draw for the first for the first uh, mosaic that we had in the field. So yeah, basically it's that. Actually, the rotation really helps to draw, and also uh, is nicer to show. In, for example, in presentations or saving image. Yeah. 
I guess it address or I guess I answer your question, right? Uh, well, I think so. I think so. Thank you. But please feel free to come uh, and ask questions in our group in the forum there. Uh, these questions are really common question that I receive. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hopefully it can help you. Okay, I'm gonna ask one more question uh, while we wait to see if, if there's any other questions uh, coming. Um, so one of the things that's been interesting recently is uh, looking at a couple other um, software packages, uh, one being Progeny, um, and their approach is different than what my lab uh, has traditionally used, which is we use something that's already been orthomosaic, which it appears that that's what you're primarily focused on as well. Um, one of the things they're doing is going back to the original images. So, you know, in the, in the overlap, you might have 10, 10 images of the same plot, and then you can extract those and then run your statistics on, on individual plot images rather than ortho mosaic images, which somewhat degrade the quality. Um, what's been your, uh, experience on that? Have you had, have you, have you tried anything like that or, um, any, any such approaches? No, no, actually not. Actually, that was not our focus, right? So uh, basically, what we are doing, we do, we are doing the ortho mosaicing uh, using, uh, you know, open draw map. Okay. And for our reality, for our fields, and for the flight height that we are flying, and it's perfect. Like works pretty well, right? So. Uh, Basically, we are going through this step line here. But actually, that was a really amazing idea uh, that they, they had. I, I watched the seminar. It was great. A friend of mine, he's taking pictures from greenhouse, and then he's using, he's evaluating individual pictures in the greenhouse using the, you know, field imager to do extraction. I don't know exactly if he's doing or not the orthomosaic or, or if he's, evaluating uh, individual pictures. So, but uh, it is possible, I guess, if you are adapt the technology, right? So if, if we check here, the, oops, here. If in this code, we are doing the parallel. So we put all images that we have in a folder and we have the name of each image here. Thinking how you can do this, you have all your pictures from the field here, here, and then you do whatever you want to do or some coding that you are looking for, for example, count seeds or seeds, no, sorry, count plants in individual picture or something like that. You can run the parallel or loop or parallel code, and then you have your results per picture, uh, per picture you know? I guess it's use the creativity and yeah, and combine the scripts and functions. Maybe it's possible. Yeah. Great question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we got two more two more questions. Sorry, and then we'll uh, we'll let you go. Uh, from Leonardo, uh, I'm sorry, Leonardo. Um, the question about shapefile. Is there some way to generate the shapefile automatically just using vegetation and ground pixel values using field image R? Automatic, uh, no, no, actually, because it's important. In, in our case, it's important. For example, in our case, we have the borders, right? And the, we don't want to use the borders. And then that's why we are selecting the, you know, the area around uh, the alleys that we have in the field. Like we are selecting these regions here, right? And then we say the number of rows and columns. So it's super fast. When you are evaluating individual images, uh, wh what we are doing in the code is, uh, here. when you are evaluating individual image, we use the field polygon, which is that function that also draw different shapes. And we use this extent equal true. When you do this, the entire Im area in your image will be the shape file, right? So it's another, it's another, it's another thing that happened. This this parameter is a thing that happened after we receive a background of someone that needs. Oh, I, I, I don't I don't wanna I wanna use the entire picture. I not wanna use only 
the shape file that I draw. So, and then we did this extension here. Uh, so this is one possibility to select the entire area. But actually right now is pretty, you know, in, you need to say where you wanna draw. It's not automatic. Okay. But I, yeah, thinking here, I guess it's possible make some something to do that. But uh, I don't, <laughs> do you know, we are in the middle of the season right now. <laughs> Maybe next year during the sure. winter, uh, I can think about that. But thank you, thank for the question. Okay, last question from uh, Dr. Shu Yu Liu. Um, is it possible to count the number of heads per unit area and number of spikelets per head of wheat from ground field plot images or UAV images? Great question. Uh, yes. Again, if we, if we are using the right vegetation index here, let's go here. If we are using the right vegetation index that can identify your, uh, you know, wheat flowering, you can, using image segmentation and thresholding, you can remove the background, remove leaves, remove soil, and have only the points that is related with uh, what you are looking for, in this case, the, uh, the flowers, right? And with this, you can use the function field count and count the number of uh, you know, uh, ha uh, wheat heads in your polygon or your shape file. It is possible, yeah. Actually, it'll be a little bit hard, but as soon as you have the pipeline working and you already have the index that identify exactly what you wanna, you can put in a loop and do everything at the same time. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Matias. Um, I'm sure everybody will uh, follow me in giving a, a round of applause to you. Um, great job. Uh, your article, of course, is in the Plant Phenome Journal. Uh, people can go ahead and look at it. And if they have any questions, I think you are easy enough to find. They can, they can reach out to you. So great job. And we'll look forward to hearing what you're up to in the future. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for this opportunity. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.